This video demonstrates using JavaScript to make the asynchronous call to a PHP controller. Selecting items from a database, using PHP to create a JSON object, sending that JSON object back to a JavaScript function, and using a second JavaScript function to wrap the resulting data in HTML and inject it into a web page. The resulting data will be used to start an update or delete process with items stored in the database. Because we are using an MVC approach, we'll begin in the vehicle's controller. In the default case, we will use a custom function to request a result set of car classifications, which will then be parsed and wrapped into an HTML select list in order to display the list into a web view. The initial function used to query the classification list is the same used to get the data for the website navigation bar. The function used to build the HTML select list around the individual data items will be built in a functions library file. The function is shown in the video. When the view is delivered to the browser, a drop-down select list is displayed. When a classification is selected from the list, an AJAX request is made to the controller using a JavaScript event listener. The code for the JavaScript is stored in an external JavaScript file and is shown in the video and is found in the course materials. The URL used as part of the AJAX call contains two name value pairs. The first acts as a trigger in the controller to fire the correct case statement, while the second indicates for which vehicle classification the data is needed. The PHP controller collects the first name value pair and fires the appropriate case statement. The second name value pair is then collected and the request is made to query the data from the database. The function to handle the query is stored in a model file and requests the vehicles based upon the classification ID, which is then returned to the controller as a multidimensional array. Once the data is returned to the controller, it is converted to a JSON object and sent back to the JavaScript event listener. Please note the use of the built-in PHP JSON encode function and that the data is echoed, not returned. This is unique to the JSON object. When the JSON object returns to JavaScript, it checks that the response was OK then it is converted from JSON to a JavaScript object. Then the resulting JavaScript object is sent to another custom function to wrap the data in an HTML table. You'll notice that the table contains two links for each vehicle to begin the update or delete process. The URLs for each are very similar to the URL discussed earlier as it sends two name value pairs to the controller. Once the table is done, it is injected into the view using DOM injection. The view appears much as it did before the classification from the list was selected, but the table with the vehicles and the two links should appear beneath it. The JavaScript function for creating the table and injecting it into the views are shown in the video and in the class materials. Finally, the web view code is shown. Pay particular attention to the fact that the JavaScript file is linked to the HTML file at the bottom of the page and not in the head. Also, the opening and closing table tags are present and the opening tag has a unique ID which will be used by the JavaScript to know where to inject the code. The page also contains a NoScript element, indicating to the client that JavaScript must be enabled for the page to work. If I disable the JavaScript and reload the view, you will see the message. By using an AJAX approach in this view, it allows us to, one, have an opportunity to reuse skills learned in the web front-end course, two, review the use of AJAX and JSON, three, See how easy it is for PHP to create a JSON object. Four, see how PHP can respond to requests generated by JavaScript. 
and 5, load the contents into a view without reloading the entire view by making another round trip to the server.